Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Scout with Three Guns Down, as always, and this is a Halo lore series video. Been a long time in the works, and the next one's going to be probably even longer in the works because there's a lot more information on the Forerunners than there is on the Flood. But I decided to go ahead and do this one on the Flood kind of as a tie over because it's going to be a pretty long time till I get everything completely on the Flood to where I, I want it so that it's very, very accurate or the forerunners so that it's very very accurate and I don't really have any mistakes in it. I don't want mistakes, I want it to be good quality. I don't want to give you guys wrong information. So yeah, a lot of research has gone into this, uh, especially with the Flood. So let's start with the Flood by where the Flood came from. Uh, now, from what we know, and this was in the Forerunner uh, book, uh, the Foreign Saga books, the Flood were discovered as a powder in a jar at first. From our first understanding of them, that's the original form of the Flood, is a powder in a jar. How did they start from a powder in a jar to a parasite? Well, the Precursors designed the Flood as a biological weapon to use against the Forerunners in the Precursor Forerunner War. When the uh, Forerunners found out that the Precursors weren't happy with how the Forerunners were turning out and they were going to abolish them and create a new race to uphold the mantle correctly, the Forerunners weren't happy, so they went to war with the Precursors. The Precursors created the Flood. Now, the Precursors had access to Tier Zero technology. Now, think about it like this. If you build an engine, it's a totally new revolutionary design engine. No one's ever seen an engine that works like this. It's like a hundred times more efficient than any other engine. No heat loss or anything like that. Blah, 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 blah. And no one knows... It, it would be kind of like you design that engine and then you don't know how that engine works. If you design that engine, you would know exactly how it works. It's the same thing with designing a pathogen to be introduced into the environment like the flood or like a, a virus. Um, for instance, the avian flu, the bird flu. Um, there wasn't one that could be trans uh, transferred between species, humans and birds. And then so a bunch of scientists sat down and said, well, hey, let's make one and see if we can get it to transfer between humans and birds. And they did, and thankfully because they made it, they had the, the cure for it, but it was kind of stupid of them because it's like, what if this breaks out in mass quantities and we can't produce this cure fast enough? And flu cures don't always work. I haven't got a flu shot, and I'm not getting one. <laughs> and I haven't had ever the flu. I say that, watch that. Next month, I'll have the flu. So, yeah, the precursors designed the flood. Now, if you design them, you should know how they work, thus having the cure. The precursors also had access to tier zero technology, uh, meaning complete understanding of biological, physical, astronomical, technological, every kind of science you can think of. That's what tier zero technology is considered, having complete understanding of the entire universe. Um, and there's a lot of precursor technology that I've been reading through these Forerunner books, and it's kind of like, damn that's cool like supposedly uh, the buildings on one of the precursor planets um, was made out of uh, solid hydrogen or was it helium solid hydrogen or helium anyway what it was and it's kinda like the physics holy grail it's like metalloid hydrogen um, coincidentally which is the same thing that Thor's hammer is made out of um, and this material is so... It's crazy. Go look it up if you're really that interested in it. Uh, solid hydrogen. It's like the, the holy grail of physics <laughs> is what it is. It's, it's insane. So the precursors created the flood, right? Uh, and they created the Flood to be used against the Forerunners, which is why when the Flood were introduced into the Forerunners, they were instantly able to adapt and take over the Forerunners like nobody's business. And, well, we'll get to that in a second. So if they created the Flood, they should have the cure. I assume they did, which is why they created the Flood. Why would they create something they can't stop? Now, one person I, I read was theorizing on some forms because I was talking back and forth to some people about this, getting some ideas. I also talked to uh, two biology professors, their husband and wife, and I had classes under both of them. And I talked to them about a lot of my theories and a lot of ideas to see if they're right. And they supported me and backed me and gave me a lot more ideas onto my theories uh, that I was theoretically right from a theoretical standpoint. More right than most of the other theories that were out there on the net. So, <laughs> science, bitch! Oh, don't mean me. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, moving on. No, we're not moving on. We're still on the same subject. So, yeah, they, they would have created the cure for it, right? Uh, and so they would have unleashed the flood onto the foreigners, and then they would have used their cure, we're going to call it, might have been some kind of physical agent that kind of obliterates the flood but nothing else, or stops the flood but nothing else, uh, or vegetabilizes the flood but nothing else. Some kind of component like that. We're not entirely sure. It might actually be what the humans use, which is what we're going to get to in a minute. Um, and we're going to get onto one of my theories at the end of this video. So they would have, they, they had the cure, they knew how to use it, they knew how to protect themselves from their own creation, of course, obviously. Now, the flood were first introduced by accident on a human colony. Uh, and they, they, they were introduced by accident on the human colony because the, the precursors were gone from the galaxy at this time. The precursors were killed off and the rest of them escaped into space. Um, a very few select breast of them escaped off into space before they could be entirely killed off. And they didn't have time to introduce this into the Forerunners. Now, the first contact that was made was with the humans, and it was introduced on accident, stumbled upon, on a human colony, where it started to get into these pets. And when it got into these pets, the pets started to grow fur, and then other pets, they weren't pets, they were wildlife. Some of them were pets. They, some, they were domesticated at some parts. Um, but they started to grow this weird fur that the other uh, pets started to consume, and then stalks started to grow out, and the, the animals started to consume that too, and this is one particular species of animal. This wasn't, I'm not entirely sure of it, but let's just call it uh, sci-fi dog. Sci-fi dog. So, sci-fi dogs started to grow weird fur, and then other sci-fi dogs started to eat the weird fur, and then when other sci-fi dogs started to eat the weird fur, the, other, the ones that ate it started to grow stalks, and then other sci-fi dogs started to eat that, and then they started to continuously mutate by eating parts of each other, cannibalistic, things like that, and then they became bleh, the Flood. Um, and when they became the Flood, they were able to adapt to the human genome and instantly infect them and create monstrous amounts of infection. Now this was when the humans were at their tip-top peak of their evolutionary chain at this point. They were technically further ahead in science than the Forerunners were. We were at one point before the Forerunners set us back. Uh, the Forerunner, the, the, the humans, um, encountered the Flood, and the Flood started to spread across the colony. Now, if you've seen any of the Terminal videos, this is when they're talking about the humans running away, and then coming into contact with the Forerunners, and then fighting against them. The humans weren't trying to start a war with the Forerunners, and the humans weren't destroying Forerunner war worlds or civilizations just for a war. The Flood were infecting those Forerunner worlds, and the humans knew what they had to do. They had to stop the infection. Think of the Flood as a zombie infection. How do you stop a zombie infection? Well, you can find a cure, but that would be very hard. Um, and it's much easier just to nuke the whole fucking thing. You know, for instance, Raccoon City. It, if one town is infected and it's still contained in that one town, uh, we don't have a cure yet. It may take us weeks, so instead of letting a huge population of zombies sit in this town for weeks, just nuke the fucker. We'll take a couple of examples uh, for study later on and make sure we do have a cure later on when this comes up. Now, of course, that's not how Umbrella Corporation have handled it, but, well, the nuke part, but the cure part in theory. Okay. Um... So, yeah, that was the idea for the human race. They were working on a cure, but while they didn't have a cure, they're like, we need to kill the infestation. Now, the foreigners saw this as an act of violence, so they started to retaliate, which started the human forerunner war. The for now, the humans weren't purposely trying to start a war with the foreigners. They were trying to save forerunner civilizations and worlds, what they could. It's like, this one's really close to this one. This one's infected. Okay, nuke it. That one's saved for a time being. Uh, it gave them more time. Now, later on, the humans did find a cure. Uh, and basically what happened with this cure was that other floods started to attack other flood. Floods started to attack flood, and the flood just endlessly consumed themselves. Um, so it's like if you have two flood, and then one flood eats the other flood, you have one flood, two, one. So pretty much they would half themselves, and then half themselves, and then half themselves, and then half themselves. So it was really, really effective in terms of a cure and downgrading that population of the flood really, really quickly. How did it work, though? We'll get to that later on. Um, 
but the humans did create a cure for the flood. The flood started to fight against each other, and then the last little bit of them flew off into some dark corner of the galaxy and hid for a hundred thousand years. Now, because the forerunners were fighting the war with the humans, they thought the humans were purposely trying to kill off the forerunners. Um, but the, for the humans were being attacked from by two sides, so they kind of lost, even though they were superior at that point. It's kind of funny how we're always making ourselves superior in stories. Like, even this whole time when we thought the Precursors were greater, it turned out the humans were actually greater. Uh, and then we just kind of ran into a really bad situation. <laughs> so yeah, it's funny how we consider ourselves such a great race. Now, 100,000 years later, they come back, and they're in infesting the Forerunners, which is where this picks up in the books. Uh, the, the powder in the jar its how it's come back, so they start infecting the Forerunners. Now, the Forerunners fought the Flood for a long amount of time. Uh, they tried total... I, I'm not going to say nuclear, because they had more advanced physics. They were using something else than nuclear explosions, but pretty much on the same level. So... Massive destruction solutions, that didn't work. They just ended up killing more than they saved. They tr When they first encountered it, they treated it like... Uh, they treated it how they shouldn't have. They treated it like a military situation when they should have treated it like a contamination situation. Because it was. It was a contamination. It's a pathological, biological agent that was destructive. But they treated it like a military situation, which is where they screwed up. They didn't try quarantine parameters, basis, or anything like that. They just tried kill, kill, kill. That doesn't work against the Flood. The Flood were made to overcome that. So this continued on and on and on. And finally, the this is where I wanted to get to this one part. Somebody inboxed me. I'm sorry, I can't remember your name right now. If uh, I'll put it in the description below. I'll look it up later. But this guy brought up an interesting point, which I think is where some people might be confused about what exactly the Flood are and where they came from. Um, the Flood were made as a pathological, or not a pathological, a biological agent uh, to be used against them. Um, they... See, Someone brought up some confusion that uh, I think many people might have the confusion that kind of look into the lore, but not completely, that the Flood came from the Composer. Now, if you aren't familiar with the Composer is, it was introduced to us through Halo 4. The Composer was something that the Forerunners designed so that they could put themselves in a digitalized world. They could all become digital. They would digitalize their entire civilization, starve the Flood out, and then when the Flood starved out, they would go back to a biological state. It was kind of like their idea of transcendency. If we can exist on two separate planes, we're pretty much gods. You know, instead of dying, we'll just go into a digital world. And we never die there because we don't age. That was their idea of ascendancy. However, with the Composer, it didn't work. When they tried to come back out on the other end as a biological thing it that they, they, they didn't work they were mutated they were uh horridly disfigured some didn't even live coming out of it uh, a lot of bad things happened but the flood did not come from this the flood did not come from this this the composer was a solution the foreigners had designed for the flood um they did not design it and then the flood came out of it. It was a solution that they designed for the flood. The forerunners did not create the flood. The precursors created the flood. It was a solution they designed for the flood. want to be really clear on that. But this solution didn't work. This was one of the many solutions the forerunner tried. Well it went on and on and on and on and eventually the librarian had a solution. Catalog all existing life except the forerunners for some reason. Catalog all existing life in the universe. Create the halo rings, which is going to abolish all life in a biological bomb. Um, and then let the flood starve out and repopulate the universe. Uh, well, our galaxy, actually, to be specific, not the universe because this only goes as far as our galaxy. Um, so, anyway, uh, as far as our galaxy is concerned, they created the rings, they set the biological bomb off, and the flood starved out. Now, it does specifically state that they designed the halo rings to starve out the flood. The halo rings did not affect the flood. They only affected sentient beings. 
Now I have to define sentient beings for this purpose because um, what do we consider a sentient being? Definitions are theoretical, but in my my sense of this, it has a brain, it has a conscience, uh, it makes choices, thought process. That is what I would consider a sentient being, and we're going to get on to later why the flood are not sentient, and uh, we're going to get on to why the halo rings only affected sentient beings. Now. I talked about this in another video, but I've got a couple possibilities now. I just had one. Um, my professor gave me a couple more ideas on a couple more possibilities how the Halo Rings could have worked in terms of killing off sentient beings. So, um, the Flood were designed to attack sentient beings. If you take the sentient part away from the being, it's just a being, and the Flood don't attack them. Uh, it's based off um, electromagnetic signals we give off in their brain that they recognize through that, pheromonal, if we're not sentient anymore, we're not producing certain pheromones that would be able to recognize us as sentient beings. The flood only attacks sentient beings, so if you're not being recognized as a sentient being, then you're dead. I mean, if you don't have a brain, if you're not thinking, you're always thinking. If you're not... <laughs> so the halo rings could have uh, shot out an electromagnetic wave that disrupted uh, this uh, polarized field in our brain, it's not polarized, it could, um, but it, it could have sent out an electromagnetic wave that could have disrupted the electromagnetic field in our brain and pretty much turned everything in vegetable, in uh, every sentient being into a vegetable. So it just kind of fell over on the ground and just like, <sighs> until it decayed away and died, which would have taken two weeks at the, m three weeks, maybe a month at the most with human beings. Uh, if you just kind of fall over and die, well, if you just kind of fall over and vegetalize, you're not eating, you're not drinking, you're not breathing. Well, you are breathing. That's uh, one of those functions. What are they called? I forget what the different muscle types are. Shut up. If you're a biology major, you know what I'm talking about. The different muscle types. The one involuntary. Yeah, involuntary breathing's. In no breathing is breathing involuntary. I don't know. Your heartbeat's involuntary. Um, I guess breathing is voluntary. Do we control our breathing? Well, no, we kind of have to breathe, because if you hold your breath, you just pass out and you start breathing again. So I'm going to consider breathing involuntary. Um, but yeah, involuntary muscles. Uh, so, you know, s s the, that just kind of stops and you turn into a vegetable, and with no life support, you die. Uh, because you're not eating. So it turns them into vegetables, right? Uh, and then they all just die. That's one idea. The other idea is we have the electron chain transport system, which has ATP, or it has ADP that it turns into ATP, then breaks off the extra phosphate from the ATP to back to ADP, which makes energy. If you've had any kind of advanced biology course, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to explain it in depth. Basically, that's how we create a good, actually, it's like pretty much all energy. The electron chain transport system creates some, but uh, that's also where the energy flows through as well to distribute through other parts of the cells. Um, so one idea is that um, it just destroys the phosphates. You could send out something carried again by some kind of uh, electromagnetic wave um, or the, the, the light spectrum like radio or microwave or whatever. One of the waves that had a very large reach and uh, you could shoot a wave like that out across the galaxy that just disrupts phosphates. It attaches um, another chemical to it, uh, another element to it that keeps it from, you know, uh, attaching to anything else, uh, makes it completely stable. That's chemistry, I'm not going to get into that either. A whole another can of worms. Um, but basically it stops you from creating energy was the other way. Uh, so it can disrupt your brain activity and make it zero, or it can stop you from creating energy. That's the other way. Those are the two possibilities um, that it could kill sentient beings off. Um, th that's part of the reason why it wouldn't kill plants off and vegetation off, uh, is because they use... Uh, what's the plant thing? SpongeBob photosynthesis, yeah. <laughs> you can tell my my brain's gone. Um, I've been thinking too much about this, but yeah, photosynthesis is a different kind 
uh, they create the sugar, then they break down the sugar, they create their own food, to use their own food, even though, so they use glycolysis, and uh, the, the cal and I could get all into that, but I'm not going to. So plants produce energy a different way than we do, which is why it wouldn't affect them. It affects our way of producing energy, not plants and vegetation. Um, so anything that has a thought process or produces energy like we do is considered that, right? So that's how the halo ring would have affected sentient beings. So it kills all them off, then they repopulate our galaxy after the floods starve off. Now it does specifically say that the floods starved off. Um, and I, I want to be very clear about that because the flood... Um, the flood are a parasitic entity at best uh, in their completely evolved state. Um, and parasitic entities don't create their own energy, they steal it from other organisms, uh, which is why this also would not have affected them. Also, uh, this would not have affected the, the, the flood, because uh, as I said again, they take their energy from other beings, they don't produce energy the same way we do, so that would, that would have been one way. Uh, now that is how the forerunners dealt with the flood, and then they repopulated the galaxy. Now I want to get on to some uh, some key points, um, which are going to eliminate a few of my theories. What is a flood grave mind? A grave mind, and this is how the flood t take their host. When they take their host, they take on the host memories, they take on the host thought process, they take on the host brain power, but it's not completely independent. It's still kind of feral, animalistic, not entirely there. Which is why I think the halo rings are ruled out as being an electromagnetic wave that disrupts brain function. Because there is some semi-brain function there to drive the animalistic tendencies forward of the flood. Which is why I think it would have been more something that blocks how we create energy by destroying phosphates. Um, you know, something along those lines. Um, and and th th some people were also arguing that uh, the flood could have hidden a part of the galaxy. That's why they weren't affected by the rings. Again, it specifically states they designed the rings to starve the flood. They did not design the rings to kill the flood. They designed the rings to starve out the flood. Then once the flood were starved out, an AI they had created in a machine would recognize this, just like we have Cortana, forerunners had AIs of their own, AIs of their own. The AI would recognize that the flood had starved out and repopulate the galaxy once they had cataloged every species. So the rings starved the flood, did not kill them. They did not affect the flood at all. How did the flood survive though? I'll get to that in a minute. Um, what is a grave mind? A grave mind is a collection of all the consciousness that the flood have absorbed. Like I said, when they take over a host, they absorb their brain, their memories, their thought process, everything into them, but they keep just enough of the basic brain tendencies and functions to drive the animalistic feral properties forward. And in small groups, flood communicate to themselves on pheromonal levels, which is where I'm getting to how the humans made the cure for the flood. So yeah, they communicate on a pheromonal level, pheromones. They use pheromones sense in the air to communicate with each other, kind of, in a sense. Uh, spores also would have been a communication idea. Um, but when a bunch of flood, a big bunch of flood have taken over a bunch, they come together in one big unity and create what they call a grave mind, which is a connection of all the consciousness that the flood have absorbed into one giant brain, one giant consciousness. Now, the... Um, this might have worked against the flood, the halo rings, uh, with the, elect the, the electromagnetic pulse, how it could disrupt brain activity. That might have worked against the flood in the sense that it would have killed off the grave mind, which is the giant collection of consciousness, but it would not have killed off the rest of the flood, because they uh, only have brain activity to drive the feral components of their instincts forward. They, the, the flood are very instinctual and go off pheromones, uh, 
but they don't have the the frontal lobe kind of you know that's the sentient being part here and this is getting really theoretical here on me okay so uh, it's, it's iffy it's iffy um, so it would have killed off the grave mine, but not the rest, and they could have survived. However, they didn't have any food, so they just kind of would have eventually starved out, like it said, which we'll get to how they survived again in a minute. So how did the humans create a cure for the flood? Well, when the humans were dealing with them in small groups. Now, when there's a grave mine made, it's a collective of all the flood, but they still use pheromones to communicate in small groups. And when a grave mine's created, every single flood is considered an extension of the grave's mind, uh, grave mine's arm. It's like having a bajillion fingers that you control at once to press the keyboard. You know, if I had enough fingers, I could type with one hand. It was kind of like the same idea with the flood. They just, it, every single flood was an extension of its arm because it was one giant consciousness. So it, w it knew everything that was happening to the flood, and that's how it could so well and so aggressively coordinate its attacks and effectively take over the galaxy in a very simple, easy, and quick manner. However, they still used pheromone communication in smaller groups. So the humans cure, um, it doesn't really state how the humans cured them, but this is my theoretical idea on it. The humans created a mutation in the flood. They forced a mutation in the flood. Now, this mutation could have happened without force, because the flood are a very mutatious type of uh, organism once they've evolved from that biological state, that pathogen state. Um, once they've evolved from that biological state, that pathogen state, they are... Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was going with that. Anyway. Uh, but they're using those pheromones, right? And so they're constantly attaching this stuff, and they're constantly uh, mutating. So this mu mutation could have happened on accident by the flood, but it would have been killed out very quickly. So... That's why the humans created this mutation and then introduced it into a huge population of the flood all at once. And then this mutation infected other flood and continuously infected other flood. So you had one flood and one flood. And uh, this flood doesn't want to kill or attack or try to infect any other flood, my notes. Yeah. Uh, but this one does. So this one just runs away in circles or whatever. It just runs away until this flood gets to it and attacks it. And then it kills it not kills it, but absorbs it and makes it another flood. So now you have two flood that want to infect things. Uh, and so these mutations were introduced into the flood population and they just kept feeding on themselves and feeding on themselves and feeding on themselves. And then you got to the point where you had one flood that wants to kill flood and another flood that wants to kill flood. And so then the flood killed each other. When you have one and one and then one tries to kill, it's like t two minus one, you know, and then you only have one flood. So that's how they combated the flood. They created that mutation that confused the flood sensory. Instead of uh, recognizing sentient beings as their food, as their attack, what they're supposed to attack, they recognized the pheromonal signals that were coming from the flood in short-range communication. And they're like, pheromones, food. So they went for what was producing the pheromones, which was other flood. That was the human's, theoretically from my standpoint, that was the human's cure for the Flood. And it makes perfect sense. So they, they, they created Flood to attack other Flood by the pheromone sense, instead of recognizing sentient beings as what they were supposed to attack. Now, what if, what if, now think about this, the precursors were Tier Zero technology, and this may blow your mind. What if the precursors purposely designed the flood so that a race only able uh, a race capable of accessing tier zero technology could cure the flood had the ability to access their DNA structure their parasitic structure their genome alter it so the flood would just consume itself the snake that bites its own tail what if they created the flood purposely in a very complicated and construed way so that only a species that had reached tier zero technology could cure them? Basically eliminating the precursors whole thing where they're trying to find those that can uphold the mantle 
it's like once you've reached that level of understanding on a scientific standpoint you know you are absolute because you understand everything you know how everything in the galaxy should be therefore you uphold the mantle which is again the idea that all life in the galaxy is created equal and you are to protect all life in the galaxy created equal that's what upholding the mantle means to the precursors So they created the Flood to find the next people to uphold the mantle for them. That's the purpose of the Flood. It wasn't to be a parasitic organism to kill off the foreigners in the war. It was made to consume all life till it found a life form that was intelligent enough on the same level as the precursors or had reached that point at a, after a long period of time to be the next holders of the mantle and the humans were it. Now, once they had figured that out, the foreigners finished killing off the rest of the humans because they were still fighting with the flood, what flood that was left, which again was w was made to just destroy anything in the galaxy. So there was very little of the human race left, and the foreigners took advantage of that, still thinking that the humans were trying to have a war with the foreigners, when in fact they were just running into the galaxy and hiding. Um, and so the humans were killed off. Uh, not killed off, actually. They, the humans were regressed in evolutionary levels by the forerunners to a more primal state, living in villages, you know, with mud huts and thatched roofs. Um, so yeah. What if? Now, as to how the Flood survived, now it is specifically stated that the Halo Rings were designed to starve out the Flood. Designed to starve out the Flood, not kill them off. The Halo Rings did not kill them off. I can go back and quote that for you if you want to argue with me. You're wrong. Uh, the Halo Rings starved the Flood, did not kill them. Starved them. But how did they not starve? How did they end up coming back around Master Chief's time, the UNSC? Uh, first contact with them was actually Halo Wars and the S.H.I.E.L.D. world that they created. Um, and people had been arguing with me on the previous video. Oh, well, they were on the Halo Ring, which means the Flood weren't affected. The Halo explosions, the biological bombs, didn't affect the Flood. It specifically states that the Halo Rings were designed to starve the Flood by killing off all its food. And then it repopulated the galaxy. The Halo Rings did not affect the Flood. So the theories about, you know a flood being on a ring world and it wasn't affected by the halo ring or the halo you know explosion that's how it survived that theory is blown out of the water and it's crap <laughs> sorry um how i think they were able to survive is that obviously the forerunners having a very long war with the flood were trying to study them i mean you know if we had a zombie apocalypse we'd be trying to study the zombies to figure out how can we create a cure for this so, as they were creating the ring worlds, the ring worlds were scientific installations, as well as the shield worlds were. They were worlds purposely shielded from the outside of the galaxy to protect them so the flood couldn't get in, um, things like that. So they could have created laboratories with flood and stasis cells. They could have found original samples of the flood, the powder in the jar. There could have been original samples of the flood, the powder in the jar left over. Uh, that have gotten introduced at any at any point in time, you know, when the um, when the humans first came onto the Ring World with the Covenant there in Halo Wars, they're walking around in a lot of Forerunner um, uh, ancient architecture, right, which was built over Precursor architecture. Uh, so, who knows what they knocked over that they weren't supposed to? There was a lot of biological labs that battles happened in. So it's very, very, very possible that the Flood got introduced, and um, because the Flood were made to attack Forerunner DNA, which is extremely similar to human DNA, they instantly attached to the humans and then mutated further to attach to the Covenant later on, which we, that, that we've always seen the Flood attaching to humans first rather than Covenant, because the Forerunners and the humans are extremely close in biological standpoints, uh, and so they 
you know, connect with the humans, take over the humans as a parasitic entity first, before going after the Covenant once they've mutated enough from the humans, then they go after the Covenant. That is the most likely possibility, and it does make a lot of sense. Um, you know, if you're trying to study your enemy, keep them, you're going to have samples of the enemy um, that you would keep in stasis, that you would preserve, because you know, there's no point, well there is kind of a point, but a dead zombie? A ask any scientist that wants to study something, would you rather have this alive or dead? They'll ask you, how dangerous is it? Very dangerous. Okay, I want it dead first. <laughs> then after they're done with a dead sample, they're going to be like, can we get this alive safely? And then they'll try. That's the thing. People are always going to try. It's just blatant curiosity. We gotta know. We're too curious for our own good. It's eventually gonna kill us one day. It really is. So, curiosity is like, can we have these alive? And we can keep them in a stasis um, so that they never decay, they don't move. Uh, you know, I mean, that switch over there, you just gotta press enter, right? And then they're out of stasis and then shit hits the fan. But. They're in that stasis, we're fine. Don't let Bob near the big red button. So yeah, um, it is extremely possible that they kept them on these ring worlds for study. Remember that they built the ring worlds as a weapon and as facilities to combat the flood and eventually turn them into giant biological bombs and weapons to kill off the flood. Makes perfect sense that they would have specimens of the flood there as well. Uh, and on these shield worlds, and then the entire population is killed off, and then the only time we ever run into the Flood is when we go to where they, the, these labs were, where the Forerunner architecture was, where they could have been possibly studying the Flood. It, it, Guilty Spark 343, the, the, the level on Halo, uh, Halo, Halo Combat Evolved, you know, they didn't discover the Flood till they were very deep inside the Halo facilities, um, trying to find the control room. And uh, a lot of those settings looked laboratorial-like, because the architecture was very different from the cartographer, or the control room, it was further underground, big elevators, the library was a big tower, you know, it was more protected, being underground like this. So that definitely had more of a laboratory-type sense and a laboratory-type setting. Bad stuff we want to keep underground with huge elevators that we can cut off so it can't get up. Definitely more of a laboratory-type zone. Uh, or idea type looking at when you think about it. So, yeah, that's the flood uh, in a nutshell. Um, you know, created by the precursors as a biological met weapon, made first contact with the humans, the humans created a cure, the flood flew off into another part of the galaxy, uh, the forerunners ran into them again later on, uh, then extinguished all life in the galaxy, um, and then repopulated the galaxy, and the rings did starve off the flood, did not kill the flood. It states it so specifically. It says, starve, not kill. If it said kill, I'd go, I'd agree with you that possibly the Halo ring worlds would have been shielded, but no, it says starve. So no. Uh, and I'll, I'll if, I, if I have to, I'll bring up all kinds of citation for that. Um, and then there is the possibility, this, like I said, you know, that, all that was my personal thought. Uh, there is the possibility that the Flood were designed by the Precursors to find the species that was to be the next holder of the mantle. That's a mind blower, isn't it? Yeah. Alright, guys. Been a good, fun little video. Um, I've probably wasted enough of your time. Yeah. Um, I've probably wasted enough of your time now, and I've exhausted the extent of my knowledge on the flood and on all the notes I collected. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I'm Scout with Three Guns Down, as always. Check out our Facebook, uh, check out our Twitch. Chris will be streaming on that more now, because he streams a lot on PC, so, and I'll be streaming on that as much as I can as well. Um, busy, busy, busy. I will have that Forerunner video out as soon as possible. I'm not going to give any more dates for it. Like, I plan to have it out on the end of February, but, um, 
I, I want all my information to be very concrete. Uh, very, 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 if no holes in it, pretty much is what I'd really like. And that's kind of hard to get to that level because it's very hard to, you know, because I'm thinking some of these theories up on my own. And, uh, man, I rack my brain pretty hard for some of this shit. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you like the video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to it. Share it with your friends. Um, I really like getting out there to the community, and I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what p other people think about this and, and how you think of my ideas, and I want to hear other ideas. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you got a question, just inbox it to me. I'll more than likely respond to you. Comment on a video. I always try to respond to them. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to say, you're stupid for thinking that. Get out of the mud. No. There have been some pretty stupid questions on there, and it's like, it's alright, I understand not too many people get really, really in-depth into the lore and look at it like I have and some other people have, so it's really understandable to not understand some things. So yeah, like I said, if you have any questions or anything like that, inbox me, leave a comment, don't be afraid, go to our Facebook and leave a message there. I'd really like open forum discussion with people about stuff on there, about all these things. So, uh, yeah, that's what that Facebook is there for. It's for you to, like, immediately contact to me. Because I'll, like, if you put it there, I'll get in contact with you within, like, an hour. As long as it's not, like, 3 or 4 in the morning when I'm asleep, um, I'll immediately get in contact with you, you know, really soon. And talk to you about whatever it is. And we're also going to be hosting a lot of lobbies from there. Uh, Forerunner video is coming eventually. <laughs> And some of this stuff may change after Halo 5 and 6 come out, and this last book as well, because it may actually, you know, state what actually happened in some cases. We don't know. Uh, until they write the canon for us. Uh, so, yeah. Please subscribe if you already haven't. It's very much appreciated. Um, like the video. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. How right am I on this theory? How wrong am I on this theory? What you did and didn't like about my theories? Uh, like 25% of this video was theoretical. The rest of it's proven fact uh, from the canon of the books. So if it wasn't really too clear what was theory and what was proven, sorry about that. Leave a question if you wonder and I'll, I'll let you know whether that was fact or whether that was my theory. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm Scout with three guns down. Uh, I'll see you guys later.